Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome back. It's Keith Busher from the Art of Keith Busher Precious Mutations. Here continuing our uh, Forgive Me Cthulhu for I Have Sinned piece. I'm sorry it's been a few days since I've uploaded a video. Uh, just been a been a strange week. Bit of family stuff, bit of uh, work stuff, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. So uh, also I got a little bit stuck on this piece because I was trying to figure out what my next move is going to be. Um, not always do I necessarily think a piece all the way through before I start it, but uh, yeah. So uh, our last video we left off, we had uh, basically put a little bit of clay on each of these tentacles just to stiffen them up a bit. So now you see that they're a little more rigid. I can add some stuff to them. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what I did when you weren't looking though, I'm afraid, I'm sorry, in my uh, hypothesis pontification was when we put the actual piece back on, um, we had a bit of a problem getting some of the tentacles in and out because we had squished the clay, which was fine, but it went in behind the windowsill and that made it a little bit difficult. These two pieces were connected to each other. So all I did was take a little bit of sandpaper. Remember I said that the, uh, the, the sculpting compound that we use, AB's epoxy sculpt, I'll go over that in a second, uh, is sandable and tappable. So all I did was sand it down a little bit so our pieces fit in there a little bit better. And now I can pull, push them in and pull them out without any major difficulties. As per usual, we are sculpting today with uh, AB's Epoxy Sculpt. It's a two-part system. Uh, you mix it together. It's self-curing. It dries as hard as a rock. It's amazing stuff. It's all. It's pretty much all that I use um, right now. Uh, if you subscribe to my channel and the AB's Epoxy or AB's Studio LLC channel. Uh, on YouTube, you have a chance to win a pound, as well as some of the safety solvent, which we'll be also using today. Uh, if you can't wait, you can always go to avstudio.com and order your own. It's uh, really inexpensive, lots of bang for your buck. It's uh, it's really good stuff, and I highly recommend it. Um, also, they're having a 2K giveaway on Instagram right now with, a, with an even bigger prize pack. So if you are already using the product or you're thinking of making a project with them, Go to at Aves Studio, A V E S S T U D I O L L C on Instagram and uh, follow their rules and regulations to win a pretty awesome prize pack. Okay, so continuing on, um, now that I have kind of the layout of where I'm going to put the tentacles and stuff, I want to start adding some detail to them. But again, still, we don't want it to stick to the other piece yet because we still need to paint it and everything, and that's important. So I'm going to do this one tentacle at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the ones that I don't need currently. I'm going to start with the one that's the furthest in because I think obviously building out is going to be a lot easier than trying to fit that one in once you have everything else there. Okay, so this is the one that we're going to start with. It just comes out like that. But what we need to do is make sure that it's not going to stick to this part. See, we've got some green staining here. We're going to clean. I'll show you how to clean that up later once we've done our project. Um, before we start the next thing, but um, we want to avoid. So the same thing that we did when we were putting the tentacles in is we're just going to put a little bit of wax paper in here. I swear I'm going to break this piece before I'm done it. And that would be heartbreaking, but I can use some AVs, fix it, and repair it, maybe. So, okay. So I'm just going to take a little piece of green tape, and I'm going to feed the wax paper through the back of the piece and under his arm. And I'm just going to tape that down to the back. Sorry, tape that down to the back. So what you see we get here is a nice waxy coating that covers a spot where we're going to be putting some of the clay. Basically, I'm going to work with the piece outside. Uh, I'm going to add the clay on. But what I want to do to make sure that it's going to fit is put it back in. So when I put it back in, I want to have this wax barrier that's here to kind of push in where I need it to push in. And then um, it won't stick to the original piece, but I can pull it then back out again. I know where I've got to push clay in and pull clay out. And remember, we talked about leaving the wire long. This is why we left the wire long is because now I have something to hold on to that isn't the part that I'm sculpting. So I don't have to worry about putting fingerprints and stuff that I've already sculpted and stuff like that. So as you see, we've got our wax paper here. I'm gonna try and prop this up a little bit for you guys. Oh, my family's home with a new toy for me. 
Um, so prop it up for a little bit. So we're just going to put that little bit of wire back in the hole, make sure that our wax paper is in the right place. Seems to be in a pretty good place. Okay, I can always take another little piece of tape just to secure the wax paper down. Okay, we'll test this again, make sure where we are where we want to be. Nope. Okay, so I'm going to take that little piece of green tape off. I don't like that. I like it a little more free floating. We're not too, too concerned with it hitting closer up at the front because this tentacle comes up a bit. We're more concerned where it hits the windowsill back there. That seems to be where we're making physical contact and possibly his elbow, but we'll deal with that after. Okay, so now it's gonna take me a couple of seconds. I'm sorry that I have to uh, mix some clay together here to get to start working on our tentacle. We're gonna need a little bit more clay. I'm still gonna kind of eyeball how much I need, but it's a little bit better to have too much than not enough because you don't want something drying and hardening. Even though it's got a very long life, working life, uh, you don't want something drying and hardening while you are uh, mixing up more clay. So just gonna take out my equal parts. That's how this stuff works if this is your first video. If not, I'm just repeating myself again, but that's okay. So got a little too much gray here. I'll take some of that and put it back. It is very warm here today. Take a little bit more off. We've got too much clay there. All right. So we got about equal parts. I'm just going to mix that together. Let's put that back in there for now so I can kind of visualize it. The other thing we're going to do is once we're done this part, um, I'm going to get a little bit of white clay and we'll make the suction cups for the bottom and the tentacle too. So that'll be pretty neat. Do, 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 do. Um, octopuses, tentacles, those sorts of things, they have a variety of different textures. Um, you can use lots of different textures if you choose. Again, I'm going to go to my uh, try tested and true orange peel because you can add you can add a lot of character and depth with that sort of uh, texture. It really adds like it looks like a pock mark, like an aged, like it's seen some things, like it's been through a war and it's got some scars and it's got some some issues. Sorry if you can hear noise in the background. My family is coming home. Uh, had a bit of quiet time this afternoon. So I came in the studio, but everybody's making their way home now. Uh, if you're a follower of our skull sconces, I am still making that one too. I haven't posted a video on that one for a little while because I'm making two skull sconces. I taught everybody how to do the first one. Uh, and the second one uh, is a bit redundant to go over all those steps again with you. So I'm kind of working on that one when I can on my own accord. And uh, when that is ready for painting i'll be adding videos on how we can start painting those okay so i think i have my clay mixed it's one solid color it's pretty good it's pretty warm so all we're gonna do now at this point is warm it out squish it down into little wormy shapes and we are going to cover up it all depends on how big you want to make your tentacles. Now, tentacles tend to taper out, so you want to stay thicker up near... Oh, sorry. I'm doing this totally off screen. You guys want to stay totally thicker uh, up near the top. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pull this off and start again. I'm going to move this out of the way if you guys don't mind. Okay, so we're going to roll it out, but we're going to stay a little bit teardrop shaped because tentacles start out thick at the top and then they get thinner at the bottom. So we're just going to add, don't worry too much about the bottom because that's where we're going to put our tentacles and stuff like that. We're going to add to the top and make it look kind of tentacly. 
Remember, we don't want to go beyond this ridge because this ridge is where we're going to be connecting onto the face once it's once we're ready to establish how that all is going to work out. Okay, so we're just going to kind of try and taper it down, work it down to that last little bit where we were. Fold it over a little bit so we get some nice, so that it covers the original piece, but it's not too thick on this side. Okay, we're going to, this side we need it to kind of be a little bit flat because this is where we're going to be sticking our little suction cups and stuff. So, okay. Okay, guys, I'm going to add a little bit of background noise here because I have to turn on a fan because it's really hot in here. It's like 40 plus degrees, which is like close to 100, if not 100 in American temperatures. Um, so I'm going to turn a fan on. Sorry about that. Fun with live broadcasts and live tapings. Speaking of, curious if you guys are interested, I would like to do a live video. Is that something that you guys would be interested in? I would really like to do like um like a just a just a ask me anything type of thing as long as you guys keep it clean. Um maybe Later on this week, maybe like Wednesday or something, I'll have to check my calendar. I'll post it. I'll let you guys know. But maybe do like an Ask Me Anything, be online, do a live video for about an hour. You guys have any questions, I can either do it here on YouTube or I can do it on Facebook. Uh, Facebook tends to be a little bit... Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I've never done a, a live video on YouTube, so you guys tell me. I'm kind of... I would like to do it just because... I've never done it and I'm curious as to how it would work. So as you see now we've got a bit of more beefy tentacle. It's uh we're gonna we're gonna add texture and shape and stuff to it. Um but right now we have more of a tentacle shape than we had before. Whereas this was just a little skinny stick. This is just adding to our rigidity. This allows me to kind of make more of a shape. I'm gonna use one of my tools here. Uh, where did I put my, there it is, I'm going to get out my safety solvent, because there's some spots where the clay is not quite stretching over, I'm going to take one of my round over tools, and I'm just going to dip it into the safety solvent, because that helps it not stick to the clay that I'm working and I'm just going to try and smooth this out a bit here, try and get rid of some of our seams. It is tricky and frustrating when you're trying to um, not touch spots. You're trying not to um, damage it parts that are that you're sculpting. Okay, so we kind of have the shape now. What I want to do is I want to put it back into our original piece because what I would like to do is see that it's going to fit still and then you know anywhere that I need it to go in or any adjustments that I need to make I'm going to do it now before I start adding in textures and stuff so we're going to bring back our original piece I'm going to line it up and we're going to put our piece back in here and Put it in, there we go. Okay, that's where it's gonna be. That's where our piece is gonna live. So we see, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but I can see now that I'm pushing this in, I am gonna hit that elbow, which is all right. And I am gonna hit a bit of that windowsill, but because I've put it back in, now when I pull this piece away, I have a little bit of an indent of where I know I'm going to hit Oh, maybe we're not going to hit the window, so. Uh, so I can just take, I can move our original piece again. And I can take 
one of our sculpting tools and I'm just gonna push that in a little bit so we don't hit that part, right? But that's why we made it removable so that you can put it in, test it, see where it hits. If it leaves a mark, then you know we don't have to sand it down and try and figure out how we're gonna get details into it once it's cured. We can do it right now. Okay, so now what we have here is the startings of a pretty cool tentacle. Now, tentacles don't really have knuckles, but you know, you can add a bit of shaping to them just to make it look like there are, because tentacles are full of muscles and things. So, you know, we're gonna add some grooves and stuff to it to make it look more muscular, more flexing before we add our texture and stuff. So you kind of just want to follow the natural curve. I don't know why I'm so shaky today. Maybe it's because I'm hot. But we're just going to follow some of those natural. And we're just going to press that in. Smooth it out. I don't want it to look like it's drawn in. So, you know, we're going to massage those out of there and just give them a little bit more. And all that does is add a little bit of depth and muscle tone here and there. I'm not too worried about this little tip at the end. It's not quite finished, but we can do that after because what we're going to do is cut the wire off here and we're going to have a piece of exposed wire. So we're going to have to at some point put a piece of clay over that little piece of wire. So I'm not too worried at this point about making the very tip of the tentacle uh, finish, look finished like the rest of the piece. So we're still adding a little bit. Mm. My muscle tone. Just light indents and it gives, you know, a little more. Comic books are a great reference for like muscle tones and things like that. You know, you can always look at how the illustrators draw muscles and how they add things into their drawings to give them more of a muscular look. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. So we got a little bit more detail now into it. It's hard to see. There's a bit of light on here, but you can see that it's got a little more life to it. Now, my favorite the orange peel we just take that and we we're not jamming it in we're not pressing really hard sometimes the orange peel will come off that's all right don't worry about it we're just basically like rolling the orange peel over certain parts and you don't have to do the whole entire thing just do the highlights the high parts the the high parts of your muscles okay and don't worry about getting into every single little crack we're just going to kind of create a bit of a pattern. You do need some spot high spots for highlights because it adds, again, depth to it, realism to it. Parts that are stretched out are not going to have as much texture in it because it's stretched out, right? There we go. I'm going to add a little bit more here. So I think we've got some pretty good texture going on. Doesn't need to be overdone but you know it doesn't hurt to have just take a look at it lean back take a minute take a look at it see what you think if it's acceptable to you then chances are it's acceptable to other people and paint again is going to be our best friend it's going to really help us out up here where it's going to connect to the actual face on the piece um, let's put some extra texture in there because what's going to happen is when we go to connect it, we are going to have a little tiny piece of clay that we're going to have to put in there to connect it. So the best way to hide some of those connections is by adding texture to it, right? So let's add a little bit of texture up here where the joint is going to be. All right, let's take a look. We'll bring our original piece back in. Move our orange peel. Okay. We're still at a point where we can move that out of the way. 
so we can stick that in there and the best part is we now have so we have our first tentacle and it's kind of in its own little holder so we don't need to worry too much about anything right now at the moment so we can now go and take if you want to choose you can use the same color it's totally up to you uh, for me I'm going to use white for the little suckers just so it kind of helps me differentiate a little bit this is I showed you when I show you the product um, I showed you the one pound this is the uh, four pound tub it's much bigger and this will last me months especially building these smaller little projects like um, the figurines and stuff like that. Do, 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 do. Too much gray again, a little bit. So we're gonna take some of that off, we're gonna put it back. If you accidentally put one part of the gray back in with a different, into one of your other tubs of the different color, that's totally all right. Cause the gray is basically the catalyst that's gonna make it go off. So it doesn't matter, the gray isn't what really matters. Um, as long as you're using equal parts of the gray and whatever color you want. The uh, the epoxy sculpt itself, actually, you can even mix colors. So if I took a little bit of green and a little bit of white and mixed it together, um, you can make like a light green, you can mix, you know, red and blue to make a nice purpley color. You can adjust it how you like. Um, just start small because as you keep adding colors to kind of reach the color that you want you're you're going to end up with a big clump of clay and you don't want to waste it if you're just making something small they actually have um the company aves actually has uh, a color chart that you can purchase on how to make separate colors so if you're looking to build a certain color it shows you how much of this and how much of that you mix together um, and then you have to buy all the colors of epoxy sculpt and, and mix those together to get what you're looking for. So, um, but yeah, no, it's a it's a nifty little product. Me myself, I'm I generally paint everything that I sculpt, so I'm not too concerned about colors. It just helps me when I'm sculpting to kind of help differentiate. One of the things I'm going to do right now, because I want to know where the tentacles are going to stop, is I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to make a tiny little mark here where the window is. Because I don't want to keep doing tentacles if it's pointless because it's going to hit the windowsill and then it's going to throw everything off, right? So I made a little mark and basically what that's going to do now for me... I'll show you on the bottom. So there's where I put my little mark. That's basically where I'm going to stop building tentacles because it's no longer necessary to build tentacles there. I tend to overdo things anyways. I build teeth that never get seen and eyeballs that never get seen, stuff like that. But So, hope you guys are still enjoying this. We're at 23 minutes. Uh... I'm just going to add a couple of suckers before um, I'll let you guys go because then you guys can see kind of where we're going, but you don't have to watch me add. It depends on how many you want to add, how big you want to add them, that sort of thing, but you don't need to watch me add 50 suckers. Once I put a couple on, uh, you will get the idea, and yeah, you can and you can go off and make your own tentacles with suckers and stuff like that. Okay, so now I've got my clay, it's mixed up. Just gonna take a little tiny ball of it. Okay, just the littlest, tiniest little bit. I'm gonna roll it in my hand and make a perfect little ball. Okay, I take my tentacle. Here's my mark. I'm just gonna push that in there. Anything with a with a flat surface on it will do. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the back of this paintbrush. So you see, I add my little ball here. All I'm going to do is just push that in. And the clay, if you haven't watched the video before, has its own adhesive. So you don't need to smash it in there. You don't really need to blend it or anything like that. I mean, it helps for adhesion and stuff like that. But realistically, this, it's not an action figure. It's a figurine. But we're just going to kind of press it in a little bit on the sides here. 
hope you guys can still see this. Hopefully I'm not too close. But I'm just gonna mash it in a little bit. And then take our and again, just spread it out. And then with a knife, I'll make a little star pattern. If I can stop shaking for 10 seconds. All you do is like cutting a cake. You just take your suckers and cut them in half, and then cut them in half again, and then cut them in half again, and then cut them in half again. Okay. And then you can just push in the little corners a little bit, kind of like making a flower or something. You don't have to go to this extent. Your piece is your piece. So whatever it is that you feel is, if you're going like, wow, this is way too much detail for me, then that's up to you. If you don't feel like your piece needs to be this this complicated, then it doesn't have to be. Okay, push in the middle a little bit. There, and I got a little sucker. Okay, I kind of felt myself pushing on the back, so I'm gonna check and make sure that I don't accidentally yeah, see I lost some of my detail over here. I wanted to show you in this video, guys, so I just didn't have to make an extra video. But the truth of it is that... Um, oh, sorry about that. The truth of, truth of it is that you can add these suckers on once your other clay is dry. Because if you do that, it's probably, it's probably more effective to do that because then you're not going to have to keep going back and adding texture where your fingers squished clay in right so up near the top there okay so I'm just gonna push this down and into my foam that's a good way as well to hold it in place while you're adding little tentacles so that's basically I'm just gonna keep repeating that pattern I'm gonna offset them in the same way that it's a brick pattern I'm going to offset the tentacles, so two, one, two, one, two, one, um, just because it makes it look a little bit more natural. Uh, I hope you guys learned something today. I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave comments below. Please don't forget to sign up for our contest to win some free Aves by subscribing to our channel and the Aves LLC. Uh, if you're in the town of Oshawa, please feel free to drop in to uh, Deadly Grounds Coffee Cafe because they have a bunch of my mutations on display there. Uh, if not, check out my Etsy shop. I have something on there that are still available for sale. If you see a piece that you like, please feel free to message me, PM me, let me know. Uh, I have a couple pieces that we're building right now that are already spoken for, but uh, they go quick. So make sure you, uh, you get in as soon as, as you can. Uh, thank you very much uh, for following along, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great night.